This is our devotional reading for today, October 27, 2023. We will read from the book, This Day with God. We are in the enemy's land, October 27th. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelation 12, verse 9. As the Lord's people show their determination to follow the light that the Lord has given, the enemy will bring all his powers to bear to discourage them. But they are not to give up because of the difficulties that arise when they try to follow the counsel of the Lord. God has given us his work to do, and if we comply with his requirements, we shall be blessed. The enemy is actively at work, as you will see as you travel on his territory, opening the word of God to the people. As the last message of mercy is proclaimed by human lips, Satan will try to storm his way to the front, but he cannot prevail against Christ. As we present the truth that shows the people the evil of his delusions, his anger will be aroused and he will do all in his power to hinder our efforts, but continue to present a thus saith the Lord, remembering that God is your helper. Do not give the enemy the right of way. Satan was once the most glorious angels in, angel in the heavenly courts, but he allowed a desire for supremacy to take possession of him, and he was expelled from heaven. He came to this earth and entered with great zeal into commercialism. And unless we stand loyal and true by the side of Prince Emmanuel, we shall be ensnared. In the future, strange things will happen. I tell you this so that you may not be surprised at what takes place. We shall all need to maintain a close connection with the Lord. The end is much nearer than when we first believed. Under the leadership of Satan, there are men who today are doing all in their power to plunge the world into commercial strife. Thus, Satan is trying to bring about a condition of things that will make the world uncivilized. He desires to see strange things acted out which God, who is too wise to err, has not ordained. But the Lord, yes, our God, will be ruler of the heavens and the earth. If men and women will carry out his requirements, it will be seen that he is ruler carrying out his divine will. Letter 114, October 27, 1910, to Elder A.G. Daniels, President of the General Conference. We will also read from the book Our High Calling, Rewards of Service, October 27th. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth, Lamentations 3 verse 27. The Lord calls for young men and women to enter his service. The youth are receptive, fresh, ardent, hopeful. When once they have tasted the spirit of self-sacrifice, they will not be satisfied unless they are learning constantly of the great teacher. As we work in connection with the great teacher, our experience in improves. The faculties of the mind are enlarged. The conscience is under divine guidance. Christ takes the entire being under his control. We are safe only as we allow him to do this. For there is another close by, watching for an opportunity to come in and begin his destructive, ensnaring work. Then, as we enter the service of God, let him take possession of the whole being, body, soul, and spirit. No one can be truly united to Christ, practicing his lessons, submitting to his yoke of restraint, without realizing that which he can never express in words. New, rich thoughts come to him. Light is given to the intellect, determination to the will, tenderness to the conscience, purity to the imagination. Young men and women who are truly converted will depart from all iniquity. If they see the offensive character of sin and hate it as the vile thing it is, and come to Jesus in contrition, purifying their souls by obedience to the truth, then they may be entrusted with some part in the work. God reads the heart. 
He weighs the character and is acquainted with every man's work. He gives his spirit in proportion to the consecration and self-sacrifice manifested by those who engage in his work. The youth are strong. They are not worn down with the weight of years and with cares. Their affections are ardent, and if they are withdrawn from the world and placed upon Christ and heaven, doing the will of God, they will have a hope of the better life that is enduring, and they will abide forever, being crowned with glory, honor, immortality, eternal life. We will also read from the book Our Father Cares. We have the blessed assurance, October 27th. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13, verse 5. We have but one life to live, and through our daily connection with God, we have in and through the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ a constant sustenance in doing the things that will represent Christ to the world. We may not have all the conveniences that some have in ease and comfort and in earthly goods, but we have the blessed assurance which Christ gave to his believing disciples. To them he said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, verses 1 through 3. Blessed words! We may receive him into our hearts, and he will be unto us hope and courage and sustaining grace. The Lord would have us trust fully and entirely in him. Then he will, in the simplicity of our faith, believe that Christ will do for us all that he has promised. Let all come to the Savior in the full assurance that he will do all that he has promised. We cannot please our Savior more than by having faith in his promises. His mercies can come to you and your prayers can come to him. Nothing can break this line of communication. We must learn to bring all perplexities to Jesus Christ, for he will help us. He will listen to our requests. We may come to him in full assurance of faith, nothing doubting, for he is the living way. The more we press our petitions to his throne, the more sure we are of constantly receiving the great grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You do not give strength to the road you are traveling by having faith but you increase in strength and in assurance because you have a guide right by your side and you can ask him with perfect faith to guide your steps aright. Then trust in the Lord Jesus to lead you step by step into the right path. You can derive assurance and strength at every step you advance for you can be assured that your hand is in his hand. You can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. For you can realize by faith that you have your hand in the hand of Christ. You will not sink under discouragement. For as you follow on to know the Lord, trusting in Him, you will have the assurance that the one who never forsakes those who fully trust Him is your constant helper. Let's also read from the book, Lift Him Up. Always a witness in the church, October 27th. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire, Deuteronomy 5 verse 4. God has never left his church without a witness. In all the scenes of trial and proving of opposition and persecution amidst moral darkness through which the church has passed, God has had men of opportunity who have been prepared to take up his work at different stages and carry it forward and upward. Through patriarchs and prophets, he revealed his truth to his people. Christ was the teacher of his ancient people as verily as he was when he came to the world clothed in the garments of humanity. Hiding his glory in human form, he often appeared to his people and talked with them 
face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. He, their invisible leader, was enshrouded in the pillar of fire and of cloud, and spoke to his people through Moses. The voice of God was heard by the prophets, whom he had appointed to a special work and to bear a special message. He sent them to repeat the same words over and over again. He had a message prepared for them that was not after the ways and will of men, and this he put in their mouths, and he had them proclaim. He assured, and he assured them the Holy Spirit would give them language and utterance. He who knew the heart would give them words with which to reach the people. There never will be a time in the history of the church when God's worker can fold his hands and be at ease, saying, All is peace and safety, then it is that sudden destruction cometh. Everything may move forward amid apparent prosperity, but Satan is wide awake and is studying and counseling with his evil angels another mode of attack where he can be successful. The contest will wax more and more fierce on the part of Satan, for he is moved by a power from beneath. As the work of God's people moves forward with sanctified, resistless energy, planting the standard of Christ's righteousness in the church, moved by a power from the throne of God, the great controversy will wax stronger and stronger and will become more and more determined. Mind will be arrayed against mind, Plans against plans, principles of heavenly origin against principles of Satan. Truth in its varied faces will be in conflict with error in its ever varying, increasing forms, and which, if possible, will deceive the very elect. Our work must be an earnest one. We are not to fight as those that beat the air. The ministry, the pulpit, and the press demand men like Caleb who will do and dare, men whose eyes are single to detect the truth from error, whose ears are consecrated to catch the words from the faithful watcher, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers. Paragraph, paragraphs 404 to 407. The world needs evidences of sincere Christianity, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers. Paragraph 416. We'll also read from the book In Heavenly Places, Where Are Your Affections, October 27th. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. We may have high anticipations in regard to the things of this life, but we shall meet with disappointment. We shall find that they fade away, but here is an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. First Peter 1 verse 4 We want our thoughts to be fixed on the things that will abide, not upon those that pass away with the using. When Christ came into this world, he saw that men had left the future, eternal life, out of their reckoning. He came to present that life before us, that by beholding it, we might be led to change our relation to the things of this life, that our affections might be placed upon the things above and not upon the things of the earth, so soon to pass away. The shadow that Satan has caused to intervene between our souls and God Christ seeks to roll back that the view of God and eternity may become clear. While he does not despise this world, he places it in its power or he places it in its proper position of subordination, and then he places the things of eternity and their relative importance before us that we may fix the eye of faith upon the unseen. The things of temporal interests have power to engross the thoughts and affections, and it is important that we should be constantly educating and training our minds to dwell upon things of eternal interest. Will this make, will this make us unhappy? Will it cause us to have a hard time here? 
No, indeed, the more of the Spirit of God, the more of His grace is brought into our daily experience, the less friction there will be, the more happiness we shall have, and the more we shall impart to others. God does not design that eternity shall overwhelm us and unfit us for the duties of this life, and it will never do this if we accustom our minds to dwell upon the themes of eternity and mingle them with our duty with our life duties the contemplation of eternal realities will not disqualify us for the duties of this life the useful pursuits and activities of life are to stand revealed to us as encircled with a hallowed rainbow of promise and for our last reading, we are going to be reading from the book Reflecting Christ. The knowledge of God is vital, October 27th. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Jeremiah 9 verses 23 and 24 having received the faith of the gospel the believer is to add to his character virtue and thus cleanse the heart and prepare the mind for the reception of the knowledge of god this knowledge is the foundation of all true education and of all true service it is the only real safeguard against temptation and it is this alone that can make one like God in character. Through the knowledge of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, are given to the believer all things that pertain unto life and godliness. No good gift is withheld from him who sincerely desires to obtain the righteousness of God. This is life eternal, Christ said, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17 verse 3. And the prophet Jeremiah declared, I am the Lord which exercised loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. Scarcely can the human mind comprehend the breadth and depth and height of the spiritual attainments of him who gains this knowledge. None need fail at none need fail of attaining in his sphere the perfection of christian character by the sacrifice of christ provision has been made for the believe, for the believer to receive all things that pertain to life and godliness god calls upon us to reach the standard of perfection and places before us the example of christ's character in his humanity perfected by a life of constant resistance of evil, the Savior showed that through cooperation with divinity, human beings may in this life attain to perfection of character. This is God's assurance to us that we too may obtain complete victory. Before the believer is held out, the wonderful possibility of being like Christ, obedient to all the principles of the law, the holiness that God's word declares he must have before he can be saved is the result of the working of divine grace as he bows in submission to the discipline and restraining influences of the spirit of truth man's obedience can be made perfect only by the incense of christ's righteousness which fills with divine fragrance every act of obedience the part of the christian is to persevere in overcoming every fault Constantly he is to pray to the Savior to heal the disorders of his sin-sick soul. He has not the wisdom or the strength to overcome. These belong to the Lord, and he bestows them on those who in humiliation, who in humiliation and contrition seek him for help. The Acts of the Apostles, paragraphs 530 to 532. And this concludes the reading of our devotional today. May God bless you.